Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from Thomas Fitzgerald Photography and in this video I want to take a look at the new AI Augmented Sky feature in Luminar 4.2. So the new AI Augmented Sky feature is another one of Luminar's artificial intelligence based tools and it's kind of in a similar vein to the sky replacement feature that's got so much publicity and it basically allows you to add objects into your sky. So to give you an idea, let me show you what we're going to look at. So here is an image that I made. So here's the before and here's the after. So I'm now going to run through how I made this image and kind of talk you through the procedures and show you a few little tips and tricks along the way, uh, as well as kind of, I might talk a little bit about some of the limitations too. Okay, so let's dive right in. So here is the image that we're going to use. Um, I'm just using Photoshop as a host here. You don't have to use Photoshop. You can work straight from within Luminar. It doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm just doing this for convenience sake. So I'm just gonna call Luminar. Okay, so now we're in Luminar and I'm just going to do a few little tweaks before we get to the sky. So I'll go to AI Enhance and I'm just gonna use the Accent AI to kind of give the image a bit more oomph. So the next thing you want to do is pop over to the Creative tab. And here we have AI sky replacement and AI augmented sky. So what I'm trying to do with this is I want to make a nighttime scene from this. So the first thing we want to do is replace the sky. So this is the AI sky replacement, which has been in Luminar since Luminar 4. And I'm just going to use one of the built-in skies. So I'm going to go with Starry Night 1. Okay, and just give this a second. Now, one of the problems with this is um, we have our nice sky here and you would imagine this would be reflected in the sea as well um, and that is something that we will fix a little later once we've added all our objects to it okay so that's just the sky replacement and that's again has been in Luminar since version 4 but here is the new AI augmented sky and this basically allows you to put objects into the sky so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to add a nice aurora and again I'm just using the built-in objects you can use any object you want with this and basically you need a PNG file uh, with an alpha or something on black um, and I believe it adds it in kind of like using screen mode in Photoshop um, so basically what this does is it will place an object in the sky and it uses the same artificial intelligence to create the mass that the sky replacement does so if I click on the place object thing here um, and I can move this around and you can see some of the mask is not perfect but if I bring this right down to the horizon there you, see, you can see it's going around the horizon. Now as with sky replacement uh, one of the things I found while playing around with this is sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and while you do have some controls over the masking there'll be situations where it just doesn't work and there's nothing you can do about it so it's kind of a bit limited in that respect. But for the purposes of this I'm just going to use this Aurora image. I'm going to put it at the top here. Okay, and then I'm just going to fade this down a bit using the amount and turn off place subject. Okay, so that is our first object in the scene. Now, one of the other problems with this is you can only, it only allows you to do one object at a time. So if you look at some of the demos, a lot of them have multiple objects in it. So you may be wondering how they did that. And the answer is they basically, every time you want to add another object, you have to create a flattened version of your image. So there are a few problems with this technique, apart from the fact that it is a bit cumbersome, um, and I will show you that in a second. So to, to basically to create a flattened version, you go to the layers palette or to the layers tool tab and click on create layer and we want new stamped layer. So what this basically does is flatten the image into a new layer. So a bit like what you would do in Photoshop. Okay, so now we have created our new stamped layer. Um, depending on your computer, this may take quite a bit of time to do a stamped layer. So just bear that in mind. So now we want to add another object, in this case our fireworks from the one we did originally. So. Uh, go back to our creative tab again and this time we want to not select another object in the AI augmented sky tool and we want to go with fireworks one so now we see there's a weird problem here because it's because we've replaced the sky and it's using a new flattened layer it's now taken this as the sky and the mask isn't working particularly well 
So this is one of the issues with it. There are still some mask refinement options, so we can kind of play around with this and we can bring some of it back in, see, like that. And again, we can go place object and just kind of move it so that it fits in a bit better. Okay, so we're just kind of going to move it behind the power plant here and just kind of tweak the sides of it a bit. And we can play around with the relight, kind of get it to blend a bit better. Turn off play subject. Okay, so there we have both our Aurora and our fireworks in the scene. So that is how you add multiple objects. As I said, it's a bit clunky. Um, but if you're, it depends on what you've done. Like if you haven't replaced the sky, it might be a little easier. But again, it is it is a little problematic and it can take a bit of time. But that's kind of the workaround for the moment. Okay, so to finish this image off, we need to do a few more things. So the, the first obvious error here, or obvious problem with this composite is the water in the foreground doesn't reflect any of the objects that we've added. So to do that, back to our layers panel, and we want to create another stamped layer. Okay, so this again brings up another problem. If I want to change any of these objects or move them, you have to start all over again. So because it's creating a flattened version each time and you're adding on top of the stack, if I wanted to try and move the Aurora now, I'd have to create, I'd have to basically go back and start again from that point. So that's a bit of an issue as well. Okay, so now we have our new stamped layer again. And this time what we're going to do is, first of all, I want to just lower the opacity a little. And then I'm going to go on to Layer Transform. Okay, and what we want to do is flip the image basically. So we want something like this. Okay. Okay, and click done and now we just need to do some masking so the first thing I'm going to do is if we go to edit mask and we want to use a gradient mask so this will just start off the process and oops, wrong way around so we just want our kind of a mask like that okay and just click done for a second and I'm going to change this screen blend mode to screen and I'll lower the opacity a bit further and now what I do is I just need to kind of mask off some of this darker areas because it really should only be in the water where you see this. Okay, so we go back into edit mask and this time we want brush. And we want to erase and then it's just a matter of painting over the areas that we don't want. Actually, I might switch this back to normal. I don't think screen is actually right for this. Okay. I think that's okay. Uh, I'm just kind of doing this rough now for demonstration purposes. If I was doing this properly, I'd spend a bit more time on it as I did in the previous one. Okay, so the final thing we want to do is kind of blend all this together. So we're going to do some, just a few more effects on top of this. So we want to add a new adjustment layer this time. And we'll just do a few little kind of tweaks. So we go back to our light tool panel and uh, we can just kind of do an overall accent eye on the whole thing now. Just a little bit. We just kind of want to tweak it just ever so slightly. And then if we go to if we go to creative and we go down to glow and we just add a little bit of soft focus on this. And we don't want soft focus bright, we just want soft focus. And again, this just kind of helps to blend everything together. And then finally I'm just gonna add a bit of a vignette. So again, this kind of focuses your attention in a bit. Okay. So that is pretty much how the new AI augmented sky feature works. And that is kind of how you do a composite. So let me just hit apply. Okay, so there we have it. There is a result of our composite using the AI augmented sky feature in Luminar 4. And as Always, you can spend a bit more time doing this a bit more carefully than I just did. So in the spirit of that and in the spirit of all good cooking shows, here's one I made earlier. And you can see I've tweaked the this a lot better and it's looking a bit more kind of nighttimey. Um, so that is pretty much it. So what do I think of AI Augmented Sky overall? It's an interesting technology and it probably makes 
doing this kind of thing easier uh, for people who don't have necessarily the Photoshop skills to do this. It is limited. Um, as I said during the video, it's sometimes it just doesn't work and there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> it sometimes, depending on the sky, it just won't recognize it and there's no way around that. Even with the options to tweak the mask, it just, it just still won't work. Um, also, it's quite cumbersome for adding multiple objects and I wish they would make that a bit easier. Even if it was a case of, I don't know, letting, uh, when you go to use augmented AI sky, or sorry, AI augmented sky, get the terminology right, on a second layer, uh, it has the ability to take the mask from the first layer or in the first instance of it um, or something like that, just to make it a bit easier. But overall, as I said, it is, it's an interesting tool. Um, I don't know whether it's one of those things that's going to get totally overused or not. And uh, I think if you use it with your own images rather than the built-in ones probably is the way to go. But either way, I hope you have found this little tutorial slash review um, useful or interesting. And uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the rest of my YouTube channel. And if you like this video, give it a like, share, comment, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And also a big thanks to all my Patreon supporters who help keep this going. And if you want to check out my Patreon page, the link will be in the description below. Okay, so thanks for watching and see you next time.